Hey guys, this is Mick Hodgick. Welcome back to another episode of the Translucent Plastics Archive. In today's episode, I'm just going to be showing you what's on my desk. So if you haven't watched one of my videos before, this will just give you a quick tour of some of the translucent plastics that I have. In this case, everything you're seeing here uh, is blueberry, of course. It's all blue, um, sort of different shades of blue, mostly blueberry to match the blue and white monitor back here, back here but um, also some Bondi blue as well. The colours are fairly subtle, but they're quite similar. Um, so, let's just start, of course, with the feature, which is the Apple Studio Display. That's what it's officially called, an Apple Studio Display. If I go into uh, System Profiler here, it will, in fact, show up as an Apple Studio Display. Now, there are three revisions of this one. Um, the first revision was using a DB15 connector, and it was actually translucent from 1998, before the iMac. So it was actually one of Apple's first fully translucent products. Um, a pretty amazing product and very rare and quite expensive. So I would love to get one one day, but um, I haven't been able to. Now the Rev B was just a reskin of that one, um, basically enhancing a few, um, I think the brightness got a little better, um, but otherwise, and maybe the contrast, I can't quite remember, but basically they put a blue and white casing on top, um, this really nice frosted kind of look to match the blue and white G3, uh, Power Macintosh that is. And of course, it also um, has ADB ports, which the original also had. The ADB is at the back. And then of course, you also have S-Video at the back. So this is actually quite a versatile monitor. Now it also takes VGA, and that's how I'm connecting it to my Palmac G4 right now. Um, so VGA is really great. You know, it allows you to basically connect to anything. And I've actually managed to connect this up to, uh, you know, modern devices, of course, up to a, just a regular MacBook Air. Um, Apple Silicon M1, M2, that all works just fine uh, in clamshell mode or whatever. Uh, the resolution of this is 1024 by 768, so pretty nice. Um, not great by modern standards, but it is 15 inches. It's perfectly usable. Uh, the other great thing about it is that it's adjustable, so you can, you can raise it, lower it, tilt, swivel, and it's, um, it's air pressure, so it's actually really easy to, to adjust. So um, very nice and not something that you can get unless you fork out a lot of money these days on a modern Apple monitor to get, but even then you can't do the, the, the full functionality of what this has. So really nice, uh, nice to carry around and just use for different vintage tinkering and stuff. Just a nice to have a vintage monitor that takes VGA and four by three ratio, what more could you ask for? Um, awesome, awesome monitor. So that's the Apple Studio display. Now. The keyboard I'm using here um, is not one I use regularly, but it is interesting because it's, firstly, the most blue keyboard I've seen, um, translucent blue with a power button. Now, unfortunately, the power button has fallen off, but it does, in fact, work, and I can power up the Power Mac G4 from boot, um, which is really cool. It also is mechanical, so it actually has Alps, black Alps switches, so you can hear, we'll do a quick typing test, and you can hear what that sounds like. Really nice keyboard. I'm not really a mechanical keyboard person myself, but it's very useful. Um, very nice to have one. It's adjustable. Uh, you've got two. You've got adjustable backs both sides, and USB ports on both sides too. So really nice, really handy kind of keyboard. Standard layout. All the things you could want uh, for a, just a basic mechanical keyboard that has um, Apple keys on it. So very nice. Moving over here, we've got a Super Disk. This is a, the Amation one, so SuperDisk, I think it takes those 120 megabyte SuperDisks, and it also takes regular floppies. So pretty nice little product, um, and, and the casing is really quite pretty too. Now, unfortunately, this one is, I think it's broken. I, I don't think it's able to read, it, or write, sorry. It can read, but it, it hasn't been able to write. Uh, maybe I can work on that. Over here, you've got a webcam. This is a D-Link webcam. It's in Bondi blue coloring. It's a USB webcam, of course, so a very poor quality, and from the late 90s, so very really poor quality, but usable uh, at least. You've got an adjustable focus on the front there, um, but otherwise very standard, uh, kind of pretty cheap to be honest. I've seen better ones, the USB based, but uh, it is nice that it matches the coloring. Uh, this button at the top here, and I can't remember what that does, but, and the cable's also blue, which is nice. Uh, usually don't get that. The speakers I'm using here with the, um, on, which you see on either side here, are built by Pele. They're Pele Apollo speakers. 
uh, quite desirable back in the day, really, really good quality and quite a lot of bass. Uh, I'll have to do a demonstration of these at some stage, but the Pele Apollo speakers were, um, they're American, so, uh, and they were sold in many colors. Uh, in fact, I think all seven colors of the iMac, uh, or at least, you know, up until they were discontinued, so they didn't do the ruby and uh, indigo ones, but they did do all the fruit colors, and I think also graphite and then Bondi blue. So really nice um, and matching, of course, you can see the translucent at the back there. And on a, if you have a bit of sunlight shining through, these things really do glow almost with all that translucent goodness, the plastics at the back there. Really nice to use, very simple. Power button, uh, a volume control and a bass control. Next to it here is, uh, again, translucent blueberry. Uh, this is Maxence iParrot. Uh, these, this is a headset that's also a speaker, of, well, sorry, a headset. Uh, it's dual, so often when you, I saw a lot of the headsets from the time, would only have uh, one ear, uh, which is kind of lame, so having two was nice, uh, as well as the headset, of course. This was designed not really for uh, anything you might expect today, like Zoom calls or uh, video calling or anything. That, that wasn't really a thing back then. Uh, what it was mainly used for was actually for um, voice recognition software. So this, these were actually sold with voice recognition CDs and things, and you would actually speak into this and then you could also listen back to get some voice, voice instructions and things. But basically, yeah, a voice recognition thing for Mac uh, back in the late, uh, late 90s, so Mac OS 9 kind of era. Uh, and that would be plugged in with two ports. Uh, there would be a microphone slot, which is a Macintosh only one, and then a headphone jack. So you could just use this the, as the headphone jack and get the speakers, but they're pretty bad as a headset, so not the best. Uh, moving on over here, the last thing you can see, which is back there, is um, the MacAli iHub, and that's a four-port hub. It's uh, it can be self-powered, but if you want to get the full full power out of it, the full power delivery, you need to have an external uh, power supply, which I've got. You can see there it's lit up and all of that. Um, it's all working. In fact, all the USB accessories are running through that right now, including the keyboard. So it all runs just fine. If you were to use it without the external power, you would probably wouldn't get full enough power to run the keyboard and the keyboard's own hub. Um, and of course, my mouse here is the MacAli Eyeball, which is a right and left click mouse with a trackball in the middle, which is beautifully translucent, a bit like a marble, really quite nice. Um, now that iHub has one special feature, which I really love, the hub over there, which is that this power button, which powers on the Mac, uh, usually on hubs, if you're running it through a hub, it wouldn't power on the Mac, uh, these, but you can actually do it through the iHub as long as it's in hub slot one. As long as you've got it in that slot one there, which I'm currently doing, then you can actually power up this Mac through the hub from, from this keyboard, which is really cool. Um, it's actually quite a shame that, I don't know why PCs these days just can't have a power on from the keyboard. It's like one of the most nice features you can get. And even Apple discontinued it after the sort of G4 generation, it just got phased out, which is a shame. Um, Cause leaning down like an animal down to turn on the power button is kind of stupid. So that's one nice thing about the iHub. Otherwise, it is just a USB 1.1 hub. Nothing otherwise very special about it. They actually did make seven port ones as well, but that's a four port one. So yeah, that's a little look at what's on my desk. You can see also the clamshell in the background there, but uh, we can talk about that another time. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.